I'm Lindy Severins. I'm a professional artist. I'm a lifetime artist. I have a website, Lindy C. Severins, and I, I have the privilege of being able to paint full time for the last almost two decades. And so art is what I live and breathe. Texas. I'm a, I'm a native, you can tell by my accent. And I've lived in Lubbock, Houston, Midland. And the last almost two decades, we've lived on a friend's ranch in the Davis Mountains, which are uh, we're pr probably about 90 miles from the Mexico border in the middle of nothing. I like to say the nearest shoe store is three hours away. The nearest art supply store is that far also. So we're kind of living the dream on literally on a mountain side in the wilds of West Texas. I basically think of myself as a landscape painter. And so I, I live in the middle of some of the prettiest country in Texas um, that most people never see. I grew up with art. My mother was a commercial artist, did advertising art for a, a local television station. And I was just always following her around, seeing what she did. And where some kids, you know, sat and played games, I sat and drew. And so when I first started school, I was really surprised to see that the other kids didn't, didn't draw and paint like I did. And so that's, I guess, when I realized that this was a gift. And I've done it all my life. My creative process is probably far from um, normal. I'm very passionate about what I do. All artists are, but I don't overthink it. I paint very much from emotion and immediacy. And I use oils or soft pastels or watercolors in my paintings, not, not all together. They're all different things. And probably my passion is pastels. That's my favorite medium because they're so vibrant. They're so, um, so richly colored. Since we moved to the mountains, I'm surrounded with the things I love to paint, including these vast, unpolluted skies and big clouds and all. I have all these past lives. And one of my past lives, my husband was a corporate pilot and flew jets for most of our married life. And for two decades, I flew with him as his first officer in a corporate jet. So Jim says that the reason I paint skies these days is because I'm channeling all those, all those years at 41,000 feet, uh, flying around thunderstorms and rain and hail and bad weather. And so that's one of my loves. I see clouds outside and I rush outside to, I've got to paint this, I've got to paint this now. So I like to think that I know the sky just like I know the land that we hike and, and live on. I also love to paint the animals. I paint some wildlife, do, love to do little drawings of our critter neighbors. And my degree is in English and biology, not art. So I like to do wildflowers. I kind of, that's one of my other kind of loves. I like to do these intricate little flowers that are just happy little scenes. And I think I've taken my life experiences and just been able to put them all into my art here where we are now. One of the things that probably influenced me as an artist as much as anything else when in my, in my early adult years when I was starting out doing this professionally, I'm a martial artist and I, I don't train anymore, but I'm a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo. And this was a huge part of my life for many, many years. Even though I had painted always and drawn kind of naturally, studying martial arts gave me a connection between mind, body, and spirit, actually, that transferred over into my painting in a, a wonderful way. I think of myself as a fearless painter. 
And I used to joke that if I could jump up, kick somebody in the head and knock them out, what didn't matter what they said about my art, you know, if they didn't like it, oh, well. So I, I let that carry over and I never step up to the easel with what artists call white canvas syndrome. You know, you see this and think, oh no, I'm, I'm terrified to make the first mark. I just jump in there. I just dive in. And I credit that fearlessness to my Taekwondo training. You know, you just, it's like, okay, this is what you're doing. Make that first move. If it's wrong, do it again. Do it till you get it right. younger when I was a, just out of college and freshly married I think my biggest challenge in art was my location we were at the time we were in Lubbock and Lubbock's a great art center but I was remote from museums and exhibits and shows and we were on 24-hour call 365 days a year so going planning a show and going to an event was just something that was more stressful than was worth. And so I had to, I, I was just alone in my art. And I was happily, I still got in a couple of galleries and that worked well. And when we could, we would do festivals. We probably did a handful in my whole lifetime. But it was it was a slow process trying to be known as an artist. And that was before the days of the internet, of course. And so... Again, I was just living in a little isolated bubble trying to produce what I wanted to paint. And luckily, I came up through that without, without prostituting myself as an artist. I came up through it still painting the way I wanted to paint and what I wanted to do, whether I had an audience or not. And that's a, big, that's a pretty big lesson for an artist. You paint for you first, and then... If people enjoy it, you share, whether it's through showing or selling. Sometimes you don't have that opportunity. And this was for many years. You know, we're talking several decades of just not having to be, not being able to take advantage of the opportunities that were out there for a lot of other artists. And when we quit work, we didn't even retire. We're crazy. We had a house we'd been in almost 30 years, beautiful acreage. We sold our house overnight. We quit our jobs, just quit. We bought a great big RV and thought we were going to just travel around and see the country and paint. And that sounds wonderful for an artist. But again, you know, what I'm talking about is the roots that I had before that weren't necessarily conducive to marketing, selling art. We ended up kind of by accident ending up in an area that's a, a huge art center with lots of opportunities, everything I hadn't had before. And so I was quick to seize on that. And we ended up not doing the traveling we wanted because I ended up in a gallery. I ended up in shows. That I think that was my biggest challenge overall is just opportunities that I couldn't take advantage of over a, a pretty long lifetime as an artist. And so now I seize things as they come. been really lucky. Again, we live on a friend's ranch out here, you know, in this tiny little unpopulated place. Several years ago, she wanted to build an art space. And, you know, I was imagining eight by 10 metal building. That's, that's good. Art space is good. Always good. We're, we're in the space right now. It's, it's a 40 by 80 square foot, five star gallery that is open only by appointment. It features my work and we have about seven other resident artists and then bring guest artists in. I don't really work here, but I think she calls me the artist in residence. And so if someone makes an appointment to come see art, 
my husband and I, if we can, we'll, we'll be up here to open up, give them coffee and tea and wine or whatever, and visit about my art, other people's art, and just show, kind of show them around. And so it's been an extremely fun, rewarding opportunity for me. And I don't have to travel. I don't have to do shows. It's a great place right near home. So that's my big local. Also, I do a museum invitational show each year at the Museum of the Big, big Bend, which is in Alpine. And it's the oldest, longest running cowboy artist and cowboy gear show in the United States. It's been almost four decades old. And I'm not a cowboy artist, but I, I, I think of myself as their stepchild. I paint the land the cowboys ride. And so... I've, I've been in that for something like 18 years running, and that's a wonderful show each fall that I enjoy doing. And locally, I do a couple of gift shops. The, the area is Marfa, Alpine, Marathon, Fort Davis, and each town is half an hour from any of the other towns. So I try to market stuff in places where that will be in demand. In in Alpine, for instance, I market my note cards. Uh, tourists come in and out and sell note cards like crazy through the bookstore there. In Marathon at the Gage Hotel, the Gage is like the, is, keeps being voted the best little hotel in Texas. It's just a, a super getaway hotel. And I have miniatures there. And then of course here, I have the, the big full scale paintings and some of everything. So, so I have a, a good local presence. I have as much presence as I want. Um, the gallery that we're in right here, it's called Old Spanish Trail Gallery. I had, I had my studio name first and then she built the gallery. And this is part of an old Spanish trail route between El Paso and Santa Fe and El Paso, Santa Fe and then back down in Mexico in early days. It's a very historic area. Anyway, so Old Spanish Trail Gallery, and it's open all year, every day, but again, only by appointment because we're 30 minutes from the nearest town. So. husband's favorite paintings are always the ones that just sold. That's, that's what he likes best. My favorite painting is usually the one I'm working on. But I have a few all-time favorites. I did back in um, 2020, I was chosen as the that year's uh, distinguished alum for the College of Arts and Sciences of Texas Tech University. Why they chose me, I argued. Um, I said, you know, I was like an art failure at tech. And it's like, no, no, no. That's, we chose you for what you do now, not what you did at tech. And that was a really heady experience. It, it was a, a huge honor. The following year, they asked me if I would do a painting of one of the old buildings on campus where they always light up a big wreath each year this giant wreath and it's they have a ceremony called the carol of lights that's gone on for um 50 years or more and all the, the students the faculty and the community all come together and of course they have everything's dark and they sing and carol on the steps of this building and then suddenly they turn on all these zillions of lights and they wanted a picture of that a painting of that that turned out i think that's the most rewarding project i've ever done and it's probably not the best painting I've ever done. It's, it was rewarding because they let me use my own concept. I wanted the concept of everything coming together and all of a sudden being bright. And so it's a little more abstract than what I normally do, a little more symbolic. But it just meant so much to me to go back, vi revisit the school, um, be interviewed for the project, and then then see it all these years later, you know, come together like that. 
So that, that was a huge honor. They used it as an insert in their Christmas card. They did prints for their VIPs and did a print of my painting that they enclosed in each card package. And then I did a, a different, I did a scratch board drawing on the outside of their cards. So that's my big one. As far as paintings, large paintings, any large paintings is a huge project. Sometimes it takes a day just to get the thing mounted on board or get the canvas up or something. So any large painting I live with long enough, it turns into one of my favorite projects. And if I had, I would love to paint large all the time, but you do, and I'm not stupid. Not everyone has room for, you know, six foot painting all over the house. So as far as my goals, painting, I want to keep changing and improving. And by changing, I don't mean I want to go off and start doing abstracts or I want to keep doing what I'm doing, but I want the changes in me to be reflected in my paintings. And as I've gotten older, I'm so much freer. I'm so much more relaxed about life and interested in so many things. And I, I want that to stay reflected in my paintings. So I'm continually looking at things online, looking at other artists' work. The gallery is a wonderful place for that because you learn just by looking, even if you don't want to paint like someone else, you learn by seeing what they've done. So I don't want to stop learning and growing and experimenting. I don't want to ever get to where I'm afraid to try something different with my painting. I were an artist just starting out today, best advice I could give, no matter what your background or training would be, is to paint for yourself. And that gets harder and harder to do because the market is out there and you tend to want to chase it. Every gallery owner will give an artist different advice about what they want and what they don't want, what sells and doesn't sell. Shows have judges and judges have their own biases and personalities and likes. If I were starting out and wanted to just super, supercharge my career, I, I would paint. I mean, almost what I've done, I would paint for me first and then paint for the public and for the galleries and for the fame. I'd love to have everyone that sees this come out and visit Old Spanish Trail Gallery. I know that's not possible, but you can find me online always on my website. I'm at lindycseverins.com. Also on social media, um, my handle on social media is Big Bend Artist because I paint, of course, so much of Big Bend National Park, which is almost in our backyard. Uh, so on Instagram and Facebook, you can find me at Big Bend Artist.